So again, year six, Miss Woodhill here. I'm trying to make the most of the lovely weather today, so I thought I'd read the next chapter of Rooftoppers from my garden. So here we go, we are on chapter 12. Sophie did not sleep for long. She was only halfway through a dream when there was a clattering crash and a thump. Sophie jerked awake. She was lying face down and her scream was muffled by her pillow. Even so, a voice spoke very clearly in the darkness. Don't wail like that, you'll wake the whole hotel. Her dressing table was on the floor next to a broken mug. Mug and soot were scattered across the carpet and there was a boy standing at the foot of her Oops. There was a boy standing at the foot of her bed. The boy said, Stop it, Arette, stop crying, stop Sophie. Sophie had not been crying. In her own opinion, she had been choking, which seemed reasonable in the circumstances. She pushed the hair out of her eyes. Who are you? She grabbed a book and held it over her heart. It might help if he tried to stab her. I'll scream. No, don't scream. Why shouldn't I? It was too dark to see him properly. I'm just about to. He wasn't much older than she was, Sophie thought. He was a long leg. He was long legged and his face was tight and wary like an animal. He didn't look like a murderer. Her breath came a little easily, more easily. Because I don't like screaming. What do you want? I want to talk to you, Sophie. How do you know my name? And what are you doing here? I heard the man saying it in the street. The long one, the one you called Charles. My name is Matteo, he added as an afterthought. You were watching us? The boy picked his nose. Yes, you're not special. I watch everybody. And what if I scream for the police? What happens then? The boy shrugged. You won't. But if you do, I can be gone in. He glanced calmly, measuring at the skylight. Six seconds. Not if I stop you. He shrugged again. You could try. And what are you doing here? Sophie sat up. She thought, hold steady. It was lucky that her room was so small. If he tried to attack her, she could get out through the door in three steps. I came in from the roof. Yes, I can see that. The window was open wider than she had left it, and he had brought at least two dozen pigeons worth of droppings in with him. But why? Why didn't you come through the door? Don't you lock it? That's dangerous. You should lock your door. Yes, I do, actually. So that people can't come in? The boy shrugged again. It was difficult to see in the dark, but he might have been laughing at her. It was not a friendly laugh. Sophie said, and how did you get onto the roof in the first place? I thought the only way onto the roof was my skylight. You thought there was only one way onto a rooftop? Vraiment, you really thought that? Why are you laughing? There's hundreds of ways onto any rooftop. I could have climbed the drain pipe. Did you? I would have heard you, wouldn't I? Probably. And how did you? I jumped from the roof next door. You jumped? Sophie tried to look casual. Isn't that dangerous? Her casual face felt stiff. No, I don't know. Maybe. Most things are dangerous. Your eye is twitching. Is it? Sophie abandoned her casual face. Oh. We. Oui. Anyway, he looked at her and his eyes were black and hard. I came to tell you to keep off my rooftop. Sophie was speechless. She had half expected him to ask for money or try to steal her cello. She was so startled she forgot to be frightened. She said, it's not your rooftop. How can it be? All the rooftops between the river and the train station are mine. I did not give you permission to go up there. But rooftops don't belong to anybody. They're like air and water. They're no man's land. They're not. They're mine. How? How are they yours? They just are. I know them best. Sophie's face must have looked as unconvinced as she felt because the boy scowled. I do, he said. I know exactly which chimney pots are going to fall next autumn and which gutter mushrooms you can eat. I bet you didn't even know that you can eat those mushrooms that grow in gutters. Sophie hadn't known that there were such mushrooms, so she said nothing. And, said the boy, I know every single bird's nest my side of the city. That doesn't make the rooftops yours. They belong to me more than to anyone else. I live on them. No, you don't. You can't. Nobody lives on houses. You live in them. You don't know what you're talking about. The boy glared at her. He thumped the wall and his hand left a sooty mark. The forefinger on his right hand was missing its tip. Look, this is stupid. I don't want to hurt you, but you have to stay off the roofs or I will... Will what? I will hurt you, he said, as a matter of fact as selling bread. But why? What are you talking about? 
You won't be careful enough. You'll give me away. You have the streets. Use them. Outside, the clouds moved away from the moonlight and the room filled briefly with night glow. The boy's face was darkly tanned, or dirt perhaps, she thought, and seemed to be made up of sharp angles and eyes. I can't stay off the roof, said Sophie. I need them. Why? I, said Sophie, it's too hard to explain. They feel safe. Sophie blushed as she said it. The boy snorted. Snorted. I mean, they feel important. The boy said, so? Et alors? I feel like I've been here before, she said. I think they might be a clue. She expected he would relent. It was what you did. You gave in. Giving in was good manners. But the boy only stared at her, unsmiling. Non. Rooftops are not a clue. They're mine. You give me away. You'd be slow. If you're slow, people see you. I'm not slow. He looked at her hands and feet. You bleed too easily. You look soft. I am not soft. Look. No. Don't go. Look. Sophie held out her left hand, palm up. The fingertips were calloused from her cello strings. Do they look soft to you? Yes, they do. Sophie could have screamed. And the boy said, and you'd be noisy. How do you know? You don't know me. It seemed too much for this boy to break into her room in the moonlight and start insulting her volume control. All pavement people are noisy. You'd give me away or you'd fall and people would come searching around and find us all. I mean, find me. No, you're not coming up here again. You can't stop me. The boy sighed. He spoke like someone holding onto his temper by a thread. Fine. Just stay on your own rooftop then. Don't go near the edge. Stay low. Don't stay out after sunrise or people will see you. Don't make a noise or I'll hear and I'll come and burn off all your hair while you're sleeping. But I can't, said Sophie. Really, I can't. I need to look around. I need to find out more. Couldn't... She hesitated. Could I come with you? The look he gave her was cold as ice. It burned. Fine, if you can catch me. The boy hadn't been lying when he said he could be gone in six seconds. He gripped hold of the window frame and twisted himself up and out before Sophie counted to five. He seemed made of springs and leather. Sophie followed with only a little scrabbling, a little blood. Her legs were long and she was quick, but the boy, as she clambered onto the slate, was already four rooftops down the road. His run was lilting and peculiar. At least she thought it was him. At least she thought it was him. She could only see a black shadow mixing with the shadows cast by the clouds scudding across the moon. Sophie set after him. The night had turned damp and the slate was slippery and unexpect in unexpected places. Sophie didn't dare follow fast. She jogged as quickly as she dared across her own rooftop and across the next. Rooftop running was not like other running. Sophie tried to keep her head low and her back half down. Her bottom cropping up over balustrades and chimney pots would be impossible to explain. Her arms and fingers seemed longer than usual and got in the way. Sophie halted, panting. The wind blew harder and she gripped a chimney pot. Clocks below her began to strike four and Paris was waking. Its sound was like the hum of a hundred streets, she thought. It was the mutter of a dozen soothsayers, but the boy was nowhere. The boy had disappeared. Well, I hope you've all had a chance to get out into your gardens while the weather's been nice and enjoy some sunshine or go out for some daily exercise. I will be back soon with the next chapter um, after Mrs Brindley's chapter, which will be chapter 13. See you soon. Bye.